what we're doing here is training up in our most comprehensive intelligence. We call that open intelligence in the balance you're training. Open intelligence is the intelligence that's looking through your eyes, that's hearing me speak, that's, that knows you're here. Open intelligence, our most comprehensive intelligence. You can't locate it necessarily, it's just, it's always on. We can be introduced to open intelligence by stopping and thinking just for a moment. When you stop thinking, what remains? Alertness, clarity, cognizance, the ability to perceive. Open intelligence is present within the thoughts, and open intelligence is present when there are no thoughts. Open intelligence fuels all of these thoughts. Open intelligence is required for these thoughts to occur. So, in, in short moments, repeated many times, we can identify this primary, fundamental intelligence that's at the basis of all of our experience. That is the basis of all our experience. It's at the basis and it is the basis. So, short moments of acknowledging open intelligence, repeated many times, we start to recognize that open intelligence is always present, regardless of circumstance. The other terminology in, in Balance You is data. Data includes your thoughts, your emotions, your sensations, people, places, and things. So we simplify all experience into the term data. And the reason we do that is because all of this data is inseparable from open intelligence. All data has no independent nature other than open intelligence. We can certainly describe every single datum that we experience and the most basic of descriptions would be positive, negative, and neutral. So we have, we have positive thoughts, positive emotions, positive sensations, and then we have all the negative thoughts, negative emotions, negative sensations, and then all the ones in between. So all data are inseparable from open intelligence like a rainbow is inseparable from space, or the color, color blue is inseparable from the sky. You can't take away blueness from the sky. You can try, but you see the futility in that. In the same way, try to take away the data from open intelligence. Or try to capture the data and hold it in place. Trying to capture the here and now and measure it and prove that it exists in its own right. So this is the, a basic proof that we can't prove that anything has an independent nature. We can use scientific technology to prove that all atoms are comprised of space. All data are comprised of open intelligence. So the, again, the practice, short moments, repeated many times, acknowledging this open intelligence the technique of stopping thinking is just to acknowledge the basis, acknowledge it. And then we see all of the data, they're streaming, they arise, some tend to hang around a bit, but they, they spontaneously self-release. The thought of jealousy arises, maybe out of nowhere, and you could uh, connect the dots saying, oh, it's because I didn't sleep well last night, so I have bags under my eyes, and that person, they must have done yoga and slept for 10 hours and they're, they're more attractive and maybe my partner's looking at them and they're not looking at me. So you could pinpoint all of these dots to the, the experience of jealousy. And when you do that, you see the downside of emphasizing data streams. So conventionally, we, we use our intelligence to focus in on all of the data points, data streams, data. We focus in on them. And when we do, we, the resultant is tension, confusion, some moments of happiness, ups and downs, confusion, some moments of bliss, and just a constant rearrangement of all of our data, trying to manage them. So trying to manage something like jealousy. And, you know, a lot of the responses would probably be directed at another person, Firstly, and then it would all come back on us, and there would be then self-criticism, self-doubt, just 
our whole day consumed with, well, how can I get more sleep so I can look more beautiful tomorrow so my partner will be attracted to me again and not to the other person. Or maybe I should go do something to the other person so they're not in the picture. Or <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see the, how focusing in on one thing that happens, where it can lead. And that's just one example of focusing in on something as powerful as jealousy. Or you might just try to uh, neutralize the data by replacing it with something else or avoiding it completely. You know, we see that beautiful person and we avoid them completely so we won't have to feel jealousy. But in this training, we, through these short moments, another aspect is allowing the data to be as it is rather than indulging, avoiding, or replacing the data. And this was something for me, it was completely new. I had never been practicing allowing my data to be just as it was. I spent my entire lifetime micromanaging, indulging, avoiding, or replacing. So to let something be as it was, was initially challenging for me, because there was such an impulse to do something about something that felt uncomfortable. I put all of my energy into finding an, another solution. So when I started letting things be as it, as they were, letting data be as it is, it was unfamiliar ground for me. And then I was trying to relate it back to, okay, what is, how are open intelligence, how is open intelligence and data inseparable? So then I would start thinking about how is jealousy inseparable from open intelligence? Is an open intelligence supposed to be smooth and nice and blissful and where there's no worries? But it is, actually. And more and more we get to see that open intelligence is unaffected by the data. So that's something we can initially recognize. Just like the sky is unaffected by anything that occurs within the sky, say a, some kind of um, meteor explodes in space, the sky is unaffected by it. Um, the color of the sunset in the evening doesn't really affect the purity of the sky sky-like nature of mind is unaffected by any of the data that appear within it. So if jealousy or anger or hatred or desire arises, check out in short moments many times, is your open intelligence affected? Your, your descriptions will be different, of course, but is what's looking affected? And it's not. It's stable. It's clear. It's wide open like a clear sky. So in these short moments, we start to see more and more there is an innate mental and emotional stability, regardless of data. Even when you feel jealous and it feels very emotional, when you check in in short moments, there's something about you that's completely unaffected by the turbulence of, of jealousy. And that's, for me, that was immediate relief, immediate benefit. So we practice these short moments, and they don't have to look it doesn't always feel like they're relaxing necessarily. Like if you were in the midst of a, maybe a, a heated situation and you're new and you're practicing short moments, you may be asking yourself, well, where is this unaffected ground, this peace, this stability, when all I feel is rage? The, the key point is just to continue practicing, acknowledging this open intelligence in short moments. And so doing less and less are we reactive to the data. Less and less is there a reaction, then we more and more see we can allow it to be as it is. Thus further proving that all data arise and they self-release. Like a knot in a snake, it just uncoils itself effortlessly. So check that out in your day-to-day -day experience. When anger arises, Remember short moments of letting it be as it is. And maybe it is only a split second, or maybe you're able to just, wow, I'm allowing it to be as it is. I did, I'm not reacting. Or you react and then you remind yourself. So in so doing, there's more and more stability, more ease, more discernment. So it's also good to see that um, you know, the data, they are quite random. They're ceaseless, they're unpredictable. You know, we could have m months and months of sleeping well and then 
some night we don't sleep well at all and then we start thinking about why we weren't sleeping well. Is it because of what I ate or the noise or maybe I'm getting older and the hormones are doing something different? It just you know, Conventionally we would get all wrapped up in that and the worry and the anxiety and the, the cycle of trying to figure everything out. It, it's just exhausting. So just right there allowed to be as it is and you described it beautifully that there was a relaxation there like even if your mind's still going through all of the events and you see more and more the ability the reminder to take short moments grows and grows like today you'll remind yourself however many times tomorrow it'll be maybe less and then the next day you might completely forget and, but short moments repeated not many times they become automatic we're at some point we're just not even having to remind ourselves to take short moments of emphasizing open intelligence it just becomes more and more all pervasive in our experience more and more recognized we use the term beneficial potency so all data are the dynamic energy of open intelligence they're inseparable like the color blue in the sky are inseparable and when we stop thinking for a moment, we can also see there's a vital energy. It's not an empty, dull space of nothingness. It's just a, an open space of aliveness, of energy. And what I really appreciate about the training is to really get to see in my direct experience that all of my data are this, this lively, dynamic energy of open intelligence. They are a beneficial potency. And we prove this to ourselves in short moments many times, allowing the anger, the hatred, the desire, even the good feelings to be as they are. There's just a dynamic energy that's available. And naturally, there's a movement to be of benefit. Like when anger arises, it just, when left as it is, it's just a beneficial potency. It's only because we've been calling it something negative that we haven't actually seen that it is our beneficial potency our ability to contribute to the benefit of ourselves and others so we've had many years of training and giving description and meaning to all these things so it's not like in one meeting or even overnight you start to see everything as your beneficial potency but you can kind of get a, a glimpse of that and then it, that glimpse opens more and more and we also have well, with the practice of short moments, we have a support or an empowerment network, a global empowerment network of people all over the world who are living a lifestyle of open intelligence and seeing what, what that's like in their day-to-day -day experience and sharing what the benefits are. So, <clears throat> the empowerment network is, we call it the Four Mainstays like four legs of a chair is very solid, it's very reliable. It's sturdy, it's trustworthy. And, you know, when you sit in a chair you can be supported. The four mainstays, so like we have anything in our lives, we always have a practice, we have a teacher or teachers, we have media, trainings and training media that we rely on, and we have a community of people that we spend our time with. So in the Balanced Youth community, or the Four Mainstays, we have the practice of short moments. That is the sole practice of getting to know open intelligence. And then we have the trainings, and all of the free media that's available on our website, many of the audio downloads. That's something I really relied on in the beginning, and I still actually, every day I'm listening to some of the media, just to um, hear about the nature of, of reality, the education and the nature of mind, how all of our data actually are this beneficial potency. And just in clear and, and modern day terminology and hearing people's experience, um, there's just, yeah, there's so much free media available. And then we have all of the trainings, the formal trainings where we come together and we read from a text. And, and then we have a trainer, just somebody who has been testing out living as open intelligence and just available to share their experience and, and then we have the community a global community of people 
demonstrating the results of what it is to rely on open intelligence so that it moves from being just you know a concept or a nice idea to lived reality where people can live together in communities and they can work together, be together, it doesn't matter their background or their opinions or belief systems or assumptions. There's um, just a nice way to be together. And that's what we have here in Goa and we have a community in all over the world actually. So people demonstrating their beneficial potencies by allowing data to be as it is. Because when you're in community everything will come up. Like, even if you isolate yourself, your data will come up. You'll have your own community going on in here. You'll have the anger, the hatred, the desire, the bliss, the jealousy. Everything will come up. There's no escape from it. Like even if you were to sit in a cave in silence, you know, everything is still coming up. You can't escape the data. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with the data. The, the point is not to, you know, clear it all away. It's to open it up. We become more and more comfortable with our thoughts, our emotions, our sensations. So we become comfortable with it. It doesn't have to go away. It doesn't have to change in our experience to recognize our beneficial potencies. It doesn't need to change to recognize the nature of mind. So this is really a distinction in this training. We're not trying to get rid of negative thinking. But we see that we're not indulging, avoiding, or replacing it in short moments. That's the practice. Like if we think that, well, if I let everything be as it is, then I'll just act harmful. I, you know, I could get away with anything. It wouldn't matter because all of, all data is open intelligence. But that's not really what happens. We see that the, any, these harmful tendencies just naturally fall away. And I see people nodding because it's a very powerful recognition when we see the ways we've been harming ourselves and others, whether it's subtly or very overtly, they start to be erased from the picture without stri striving, without striving to get rid of those negative qualities. If we strive to get rid of our negative qualities, we'd have a list and we'd, you know, try to go through a checklist and today I'm going to get rid of my anger and then has that ever worked for you? <laughs> or today I'm, I'm not going to be jealous anymore. Has that really worked? It'll just pop up in the most random of times. We're feeling awkward. Maybe you are a confident person and all of a sudden you feel awkward or vice versa. So these data, they just arise, they self-release. And learning to not place all of the emphasis on them through this training is it's very a very powerful way to live. And you prove it in your direct experience.